Welcome to module 4 part 2. Routing and switching. Routing otherwise known as packet forwarding enables communication between two different subnets, two different networks or two different VLANs. Hope you remember we discussed this in module 1. Switching enables communication between many systems. This also we have seen and we have understood as to how to create VLANs using a switch. Switches are required to connect many systems in a single network. Creating a virtual LAN as we have seen in the module 1 enables us to use a single switch to connect multiple VLANs. As we have seen, we have a single switch which is connected to multiple systems multiple systems. This can be VLAN 10 and another port here, two ports connected to connected to another two systems. These two systems can completely belong to another device. This is VLAN 20. By default, the VLAN will have VLAN 1. This is by default VLAN created in every switch. We are not configuring it, it is by default when the switch is out of the factory, it's configured. Let's now understand what is network address translation. Network address translation is required to enable communication between a private network and a public networks. The IP addresses have been classified under various classes as we have seen class A, class B and class C. In class A, the private range is 10.0.0.0 till 10.255.255.255. 255. Any IP address which starts with 10 dot, that means it is a private range. Private IP addresses are equaling to the intercom in telephone network. We use the intercom in inside the organization. Like that, the private IP addresses are configured inside the LAN. Class B 172.16.0.0 till 172.31.255.255. Any IP address within this range is private IP addresses. In class C 192.168.0.0 till 192.168.255.255. Any IP address within this range is a private IP addresses. The private IP addresses is configured inside the local LAN and it has to communicate with the public IP addresses there in the internet. To enable communication between the private IP addresses and the public IP addresses in the internet, you need to configure network address translation. If the network address translation is not happening, then the communication is not completed. The packet will never return to the source. Generally, the border router is configured for NAT. That means the router or any NAT device. A router can do the NAT and Windows machine can do the network address translation or any other devices, a modem, anything can do the network address translation. The device which you keep at your perimeter, that will do the network address translation. Generally, that router is configured for the NAT. The NAT device must have two interfaces, one belong to the internal and one belong to the external. When a packet travels outside the internal network, then NAT converts that private IP address to the public IP address. The network address translation takes place at the border router. When the packet enters the local network from outside, when it is returning, when the packet enters the local network from outside, the network address translation device maps the public IP address to the respective private IP address. This is being done or the mapping is done with the help of something known as network address translation table. NAT can be configured in many ways. The configuration part we will see in the network class. Now, let's understand a little bit in detail so that you will have a clear idea as to how the network address translation happens in real time. Now, 
network address translation. Let's take a system in the local LAN and the IP address is 10.0.0.10. That means it is in the private network and this is connected to your perimeter device which is doing the NAT. This is the NAT box that is connected to a router and which is connected to the internet. Now in the internet there is a server say let's say this is 30.0.0.10 and the outer interface is say 20.0.0.10 this 20.10 is the public IP address which you obtained from your ISP and the 30.10 is the public IP address which is there in the internet. Now your system is in 10.0.0.10 that is a private IP address. This is a private network. The packet which is starting from here the source IP will be 10.0.0.10 and the destination IP will be 30.0.0.10 and the packet will come all the way till the NAT box and this is your perimeter border where the network address translation has to happen. So I am just repeating it here the source IP is 10.0.0.10 and the destination IP address is 30.0.0.10. This is what the packet structure. Now, when the network address translation happens, this 10 address will be replaced by this 10.0.0.10 will be replaced by the, the IP address of the external interface. This will be replaced with the IP address of the external interface. Hence, the source IP address will become 20.0.0.10. Now, when the packet reaches the destination, the source IP address will be 20.0.0.10 because the network address translation has happened here and the destination IP address will be 30.0.0.10. That's how the packet reaches this particular server. If it is yahoo.com, if it is yahoo.com, what happens is from the machine, from this particular machine, from the local machine, if you take the browser and the moment when you say yahoo.com, it talks to a DNS and the DNS gives this IP address as a resolution, DNS resolution. That is how this machine gets the IP address. Now, when the packet comes to the destination, now the destination has to respond back. This has to respond back. So this machine will respond back to 20.10, not to 10.10. From this yahoo.com, the response will come to 20.10. That will check network address translation table. This is NAT table. And it will understand which IP request the IP address, the source port number, destination port number, all details will be there. So it will be mapped here. It will be mapped here. So the NAT box will be able to deliver this to the system requested for that web page. This is how basically network address translation works. Let's go back to the slide. Please follow the continuation part. Thank you.